Here is a list that includes, but is not limited to, things that Overwatch players hate. C9 XD, Moira Orb. I saw that on the Overwatch League. Orissa, just as an entity. And most importantly of all, casuals. But now I think that a lot of you guys following my content know that I cannot be asked to give a damn about competitive play. Yes, I'm sometimes dabbling in it when I find my quick play and mystery heroes experience to be lacking, but in large I've pretty much opted out of being part of the competitive community. And Overwatch is a really interesting case of a player base that feels very divided in many ways, and talk about more than just which heroes you prefer to play. On the one side, you got Blizzard just trying to make a game that's fun for everyone, with mechanics reflecting the idea of inclusion and diversity. And on the other side, you got Activision trying to push Overwatch as the greatest esports of all time, spending millions on creating its own league. Now, I'm not saying that these ideas are inherently conflicted, but I am saying that this contrast between casual and competitive appeal is showing in the hero design and balance updates as much as in the player's mentality. A lot of people always talk about how they want Overwatch to reward high skill mechanical gameplay and eliminate mechanics built for the sake of accessibility. But nobody seems to be talking about the feasibility of that proposal. Not the question of does Blizzard want to do it or are they even capable of doing it, but straight up, is all of this wishful thinking or could it actually happen? And if not, what is stopping it? Even though I have opted out of competitive play as somebody who is reasonably active on social media and does go to the forums on a regular, it is impossible to avoid all the discussions surrounding competitive play. It really does feel like a huge part of the core Overwatch community is hugely invested in the competition and, as such, reasonably upset when balance patches don't go their way. And it does make sense. The most abundant type of Overwatch content out there is all about competitive play. Trying to become a streamer while participating in the casual game modes is a night on impossibility because the viewership is mostly interested in rank play. And even on YouTube, meta talk is the bee's knees and we are often more excited about balance updates than anything else. But there is this trend I've observed that, quite frankly, has really annoyed me. And I'm talking about the core community's inherent disgust of casual play. It has gotten to the point where players are getting harassed because somebody deems their most played heroes to be low skill. I see a rebellion forming that's trying to get every quote casual mechanic out of the game and completely ignoring the hypocrisy of calling some things a low skill in the support and tank category but gracefully letting it slide when present on DPS heroes. This whole idea that Overwatch has a responsibility of appealing only to competitive players does seem very flawed to me. I mean yes, realistically that might be what Activision and Blizzard are supposed to do, considering the fact that the league is their big money maker using this IP much more so than the game itself. However, it is my belief that Overwatch would have never gotten to the point where building an esports league is feasible was it not for its casual appeal. In a video I made a couple months ago titled Blizzard's obsession with data is hurting Overwatch, I have highlighted how purely data driven balance updates can be a huge problem because of the vast amount of casual players that are going to be playing the game no matter the state of the current competitive meta. I've suggested that casual players are going to inflate statistics in favor of broken mechanics not being a problem because they simply don't care about the most effective place available and as such their hero choice is hugely unaffected by their current state of balance. In that video I've spoken out in defense of the competitive community that has to suffer due to Blizzard's very slow and very lackluster balance updates. But I have also highlighted the fact that the core design of Overwatch revolves around casual appeal. Let me put that into context for you guys. If you play a battle royale, whether that's PUBG, Fortnite, or Apex Legends, and you are just an average player, managing to place in the top half of the lobby is going to make you feel like an above average player. Sure, you might not win the game, but you're still better than the other 50 losers that were sent back to the lobby before you. And that sort of confidence inflation happens disregarding of how that placement has been achieved. What I'm saying is that it is my belief that even players that spend most of the game hiding are going to feel superior to others if they manage to get a higher placement than them. And we can all agree that this is not a stellar display of skill. That's one of the reasons why so many BR players are against the inclusion of skill-based matchmaking. This type of game is just random enough to give everyone a chance to outperform everybody else and thusly make them feel superior. It's essentially a pub stomping simulator. In that same vein, I'm here to suggest that Overwatch is not suffering a dispute between competitive and casual players more than it makes casual players feel like they are competitive players. And there are a few reasons for that. We have seen the same type of confidence inflation that is core to the success of Battle Royale as a genre in Overwatch. From gold medals to play of the game to end of game cards, the game is feeding into our ego to make us feel like we 
are always better than the average player. I mean, if you have ever seen any of the posts on Overwatch hot takes, you might think that a lot of competitive players are not very smart. When in reality, ranked players are comprised of casual players that are fooled into thinking that they are part of the competitive community without understanding even basic mechanics in the game. By now, it is no secret that you can easily achieve a high rank when playing meta heroes and not even playing them well, but just playing them to a sufficient enough degree. Every meta has always promoted low skill because meta play is abusing the fact that something in the game is completely busted, at least in Overwatch. Dive in its prime was all about holding up defense matrix or poking your enemies to death. Towards the end of its lifespan, after receiving numerous nerfs, the dive composition has turned into a very intricate composition that promoted high skill and rewarded mechanically gifted players, as well as those with a high degree of game sense. Goats in its prime was all about holding W and M1 while rushing towards the enemies in a ball of destruction. But towards the end of its lifespan, it also became a more intricate composition that promoted team play and individual responsibility. What I'm trying to say is that even bad players can achieve a high rank in Overwatch by simply playing the flavor of the year composition that is busted not because of its high skill ceiling, but because anyone can pull it off. And every new meta trend over the years has only gotten easier and easier. We always think back to the past metas with rose tinted glasses because we remember them towards the end of their lifespan where, after having been nerfed time and time again, we've obtained a certain level of confidence and familiarity. But dive at the start was not the same as dive at the end. The Beyblade meta was not a hard composition as much as Triple Tank wasn't. And the same goes for every single one that followed. If a lot of casual players get their confidence inflated not only by the usual means of gold medals and play of the game, but also due to the fact that they got a high rank by playing the meta, then that could explain why meta discussions are the most prevalent type of content out there. Everyone has an opinion on it because everyone is led to believe that they are experts. And that by design. This is not to say that this doesn't need fixing for the sake of competitive integrity, but it is to suggest that this is the reason why Overwatch is so successful. You have a hugely addictive core gameplay loop featuring just enough team play for individual players to not feel responsible about their own failures, while competing in a system that is designed to inflate their confidence and make them feel above average. Also, let's not forget the incredibly low barrier to entry of a mere 25 levels, allowing you to immediately jump into competitive play to get your confidence inflated as soon as possible. Pair that with the astounding gameplay variety that is inherent in the hero roster and bam, you got yourself a game that, despite popular belief, is still going strong four years into its lifespan. I just want to highlight the irony of players harassing each other in cat fights that are all about which hero takes more or less skill than others, when a lot of people participating in set harassment are very likely victim to all the conditioning happening in the game. Everyone playing Overwatch is conditioned to believe that they are better than everyone else and the game goes out of its way to obscure information in order to not break your illusion. And all that for the sake of making you feel good and validated so that you continue to play. I know that a lot of high rank players have this wet dream about their matches actually always being challenging and fair, but how is that supposed to work out? You're playing a game that was inherently built with the intent of appealing to the masses and the competitive community, would they lose their casual player portion would pretty much go extinct due to a lack of players available to fill out the queues. If you actually turned Overwatch into a game that only promotes high skill mechanical gameplay, then you're going to thin out the high elo player base to the point where queue times will get so long that the only way to avoid them is to smurf in lower and lower ranks. With more high ranked players deciding to stomp lower ones, platinum and below are soon going to be filled with high level players trying to dodge queues, more casual players quit and you're back to step one of having long queue times. Most multiplayer games out there fund their success on the basis of their casual appeal because there just aren't enough hardcore competitive players to fund game development and fill queues. Overwatch only works because and thanks to its casual players. Competitive play only works because it makes casual players feel like they are above average. I don't believe that the game and your competitive queues are suffering because of those gosh dang casuals, but just because the current meta isn't fun. With the exception of Lucio, every tank and support that is currently meta is boring enough to make you fall asleep while playing the game. That's to say that we shouldn't get rid of everything that doesn't take skill, and instead, we should get rid of everything that just isn't fun. Let me put it this way. If a meta is not enjoyable to play in from a competitive perspective, who is going to complain about that the most? The hardcore competitive community. And who is going to leave the game if those things are not getting fixed? Those exact same players. So reason would suggest that if casual players on average really care less about whether or not a meta is fun from a competitive standpoint, and all they see is that they can get a super high rank by playing specific characters, then it makes sense why these players are rising on the ladder to replace the hardcore community that is leaving. They would be replacing a part of our player base that already makes for a tiny 
tiny portion of our entire population. But complaints of casuals getting boosted are dating back as early as season 2 of competitive play. From the very beginning, this has always been a problem in the eyes of hardcore competitive players, meaning that the entire game hinges on making casual players feel like competitive ones to fill out the queues and make ranked as a game mode feasible in the first place. This isn't Blizzard making low skilled heroes the best in the game to appeal to casuals, this is just Blizzard doing Blizzard things and being bad at balancing their games. A lot of you Overwatch only players might not know that, but they have a historical track record of horrible balance in most if not all of their games. Why are they so successful then? Well it certainly isn't because they try to appeal to hardcore competitive players, it's because the games they make are fun. And that's what Overwatch has to go back to, and hopefully does go back to following the next patch. Considering how long it takes me to make videos recently, who knows that patch might even be out already. It just seems like this whole casual player hate train is not going to stop anytime soon, so I felt like chiming in with my own opinion on it. And hey, feel free to do the same. Where do you see yourself in Overwatch? Are you part of the comp niche or do you just play the game for fun? Be my guest and leave a comment down below. With that said, I think we're done for the day, so thank you everybody so much for watching. Don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want to see more, and I hope to see you guys next time.